I've seen the best climbers in the world approach hard moves exactly like this. And it's really simple when you break it down how I'm about to show you. First, we'll go over the idea that underpins the whole approach. Then we'll dig into some of the practicalities of how to actually make it work. Stick around. G'day, I'm Tom O'Halloran and I froth out on hard moves. I believe getting the most out of yourself starts with mindset and the mindset for hard moves is curiosity. Curiosity leaves your body and your mind open for possibilities and growth. It rewrites the script of this move is too hard for me because the metric of success is not whether or not you did the move, we're there exploring and just seeing what happens. Curiosity is the fuel that brings the best climbers back over and over again to the hardest pieces of climbing in the world. This isn't just for the hardest moves though. How many of you keep on falling off moves that you shouldn't be? A lot of the time this can boil down to a lack of curiosity. You haven't, I haven't, explored the subtleties of how the move actually needs to be climbed. We come in with too much bravado and it's like, ah, whatever, I usually crush this grade. I don't need to explore the subtleties and nuances of how to do the move. And then you start wasting time and skin and you're falling off and then you call the climb stupid and we've learnt nothing. Something I like to think is, how does this move want to be climbed? And then I go on a journey to find that out. Let's dig into the practicalities of this journey. I don't let myself walk away from a move until I've tried at least four different methods and given those four methods a good few attempts each. There's countless moves that I've done where the first few attempts have felt impossible. Then suddenly you're kind of used to holding the holds, your body's found the right position and you're staring straight at the solution. Some of the different betas you can try are static, dynamic, pulling, pushing, changing where you grab the hold, a twist in your hips. It really doesn't need to be hugely different. Just the smallest thing can make a massive difference. I was trying a route once and was just playing around with the angle that I placed my foot at the crux on one of the footholds. And this literally took the move from being a wild one in every five attempts move to a solid four in every five. And this was the key to actually making the final red point. Now this is a full ninja tactic for working out hard moves. And that is to work out what the end position is. Where are your hands, your body, your hips, all of it. And then we backwards engineer the move from there. Where does my body need to be? If you're finding this video useful, I would love it if you hit the like button to help spread it to more people. And if you love hearing this sort of information in general, hit the subscribe button because I really enjoy making these kinds of videos. This backwards engineering of moves is a lot of what you see the bouldering wall cup climbers doing when they're out on the mats. I'd almost argue that the cognitive challenge of a bouldering comp is almost harder than the physical challenge. Having a solid understanding of this curiosity and trial and error process can literally be the difference between podium and not making semi-finals for these climbers. It's so much more than raw strength. Filming yourself can be hugely beneficial as well so that you can see what you're doing or not doing. I can't tell you the amount of times that I've worked out beta after watching the repeated falls from myself. What am I doing with my feet? Why are my hips over there? It's such a game changer if you're able to study what you are doing. During this exploratory process, you're looking for clues, a bit of a thread to pull at. It may not be the whole solution, but it may be enough to get curious and follow it down a path. What happens if I? What does my body do when I? You may not find the answer that you're looking for right now, but perhaps you've learned something that you can use in the future. Everything's a learning opportunity and experience, if you let it be. The key is to stay open and curious and not let your frustrated, closed mind take over. Next time you're in front of a hard move, remember to have an open and curious mind. Try at least four different betas a few times each. And if you wanna know how to set yourself the perfect hard move, check this video out here.